Driven actions are one of the most valuable tools when it comes to actually getting your users to interact with your product. So I'm going to walk you through how to set up a driven action series, and that way you can set one up for your users so you can get them through those interactive walkthroughs. The first thing I've done is launch my Chrome extension, and I have navigated to the place that I want my users to start this flow. So I'm going to go ahead and click create new content, start here, create a flow. I'm going to name this my driven action. And we're going to go ahead and select my theme. <laughs> and we're going to cr click create. I'm going to add the UI pattern. Now, if you haven't seen the tooltip video already, I would recommend also popping over and taking a look at that because there are tons of settings that are uh, very, very similar. So we're going to focus mostly on the things that differentiate a tooltip from a driven action here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my theme. And now just like the tooltips, I need to select the element that I want my user to interact with. Now, the difference between a tooltip and a driven action is it actually drives action. So I want my user to interact with this, these features. The first thing that I want them to do in this hypothetical situation is click on the compose button. So you'll notice this is exactly like the tooltip that we had previously, but instead of just giving them information about this button, I actually want them to interact with it. So of course, same thing with the tooltips and all of our other UI patterns. You can add other categories here if I wanted to add an emoji. Uh, there's a tons of options. And now what we have to think about are um, the steps that my users actually have to take. So we're going to take a quick look over here at your settings, because like I said, all of the things that are in this individual um, box are the same as all of the other UI patterns. So let's look at the things that make this tool special. So the first thing is here, you notice that this is an action tab. This tells me what action I need my user to take for this driven action to know that they have successfully completed what you've asked them to do. And now it's time to move on to the next step. So this is a click. I need my user to click compose, but you also have a cover, a couple of other options like text input, hover and hotspot. And I'm going to show you a couple of these in the subsequent steps, but for now I do want it on a click. Other things that are important to know, if for example, you have a drop down menu and you need your user to click on one of the options in the menu, but you don't care which one, you can select on click on another element and you can select that entire um, drop down menu, for example. Other things that are important to know, this is the same as your tooltip talking about element detection. You've also got your placement depending on where you'd like it to be, same thing as tooltips. And the last thing that we have is your behavior. And so you can determine if you want this to show only when the element is visible or if you want, um, like I said, if it's below the fold in tooltips, you can have the um, page auto scroll to that location. Other things that are great are in the group tab, but I'm going to hold off and show you what that looks like when we've actually got a group put together. So I'm going to go back to navigation and now I have to remember what I've asked my users to do. I've asked them to click here. So we're going to do exactly what we've asked them to. So now they've clicked. I have a couple of text fields here. So I'm going to show you a text input. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus driven action to the group. I'm going to add a task right here. Now, what I mentioned before about the different types of fields are that you can change this to a text input instead of a click. So first, I'm also going to move this box, let's say placement. Let's go ahead and put it over here, for example. Now, the action, instead of it being a click, I want this to advance once they've actually started typing. So I'm going to use text input. And what's going to happen is as soon as the user starts typing, they're going to get a next um, button appearing, just like you would in a, in a tooltip. However, this actually requires that they type something into this screen. So same thing, you can make any modifications that you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and click back to navigation. And I'm going to add one more. There is a fine line between giving users too much information and not enough information. I think it's a little bit overkill to have a driven action on every single one of these fields. I think if you give the user the space to say, hey, take your time and fill in this information, start by adding the recipient to this email and then carry on adding the, the subsequent information. And when you're ready, this is where a driven action hotspot can come in. Driven action hotspots are subtle nudges to get the user to the end of this process. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to put it right here on the send button. 
Now, the action isn't, I don't need this text box. I don't need to tell the user like, when you're done, push send. Obviously users know that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a hotspot. And so what this is, is it's a nice pulsating beacon here so that when the user is ready to go, they can fill in the information and then they know kind of what the final step of this process is. And so also just, of course, you do have the option of adding backdrops and things like that, just the same as tooltips. But one of the things that's really nice is um, getting through all of these steps and then knowing that the user, if this last step is on send, then if the user has completed this experience, that means that they hope, hopefully have successfully sent at least a test email. So let's take a quick look at this flow so you can see how it all works once it's put together. I'm gonna go ahead and click preview. Let's um, really quickly, I'm gonna navigate back to the standard inbox so that this email box isn't here so you can see it from the beginning. So I'm gonna click preview full flow. The first thing that I have is my um, step that I need to click. So I'm gonna click. Now I've navigated here, I need to type something. So let's say um, to Elise. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And now the last thing is it's giving me plenty of time to fill out the rest of my information, but I have a nice pulsating beacon just here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit send, and now my flow is complete. As I mentioned, tooltips and driven actions are very similar. So if you want a more in-depth walkthrough on all of the different parts of uh, the settings over here um, in the settings tab, all of these, I am more than happy to go over those with you, but definitely check out the tooltip video first because all of that information is located there as well. Happy building.